Howdy fellow Model Rail Boaters, my name is Kevin Brown and I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. In this episode I'm going to go over the rehabilitation of the Brownsville modules. That's something I've wanted to get uh, do for quite some time. And in the process kind of show uh, what my thoughts are for continuing with getting the scenery done on the entire layout. Uh, but before I go too deep into uh, the Brownsville work, uh, I want to uh, go over quickly any the new additions I've got for the layout. I've been busy buying uh, uh, mostly structures kits for the layout. That's my latest additions, and these two here are fairly recent. I'm going to use this and another one, which is on order, to be the platforms here. Replace this piece of cardstock and have some nice platform a platform actually there for Thomasboro. And this is the beginnings. This uh, I hope I've got enough, but I bet I need one more. Right here, we're going to have a. I'm going to call that the route six, old 66 overpass, and hopefully be a solid line between the town and the farm scene on this side. And for the farm scene, I got two laser kits. I've never put these together before. I'll be curious how these go. I want a nice barn that looks like a really nice kit, and uh, I, it actually came with the uh, windmill. I think that'd be nice. This, I don't know if this is going to be the farmhouse or not. I have, that was original on my first N-Track module all those years ago. So I made it kind of weathered and stuff. I don't know if, I'm, if this is going to be the, the main house or not. Uh, but I'll try and give it a shot. I've got a little bit more, a few more things I bought on the other side. We're over on the Blair Yard side. And my good funny, good buddy, Bill Sullivan, had an extra one of these kits. It's a modern yard office. It might be a little more modern than my era. I'm trying to go with the mid-60s. Um, but it's a dead ringer for the uh, yard office here in town. And it's the only one I have any memories of. So I'm, I, I think I'm going to use it. And it's going to go more or less here. And I've still got to get a bunch of stuff for the, uh, the engine facility and all that. And I don't remember if I'd shown this or not. This is the hardwood furniture company, Walther's, and I'm going to turn that into a low-profile kit and have it right here. So I'm making progress on the structures. Uh, so that's what I've been working on. So or that's what I've been gathering. And now uh, on to uh, the uh, next stage of the uh, layout. Okay, those of you who've been with me for a little while, this is the basic plan for how I want to work on my modules. You'll see they're all numbered in order, starting uh, with the uh, Brownsville term or with the Brownsville platforms. Uh, I managed to fill in quite a lot. We've already got all the construction, the track work, and the skyboards done. Now I'm focusing on structures and uh, uh, basic scenery and miscellaneous stuff that needs to be done on them. The plan is to start uh, at number one and just work my way down and fill this all in. And by the time by that time that's done, then I'll have a a nice completed if if any layout is ever completed scenic layout. So the first thing to do is we're gonna I'm gonna work on the, the modules on the south end of the layout. So let's take a quick peek at those. The Brownsville modules here is where everything starts. As you can see, I've already got at least a base scenery down, and they're in pretty good shape. I have some things I need to do. I need to consolidate the feeders underneath because it's kind of a wiring mess. And I thought I would do a little work on the base scenery and plant a tree or two. There's no trees on the layout, and I bought a bunch, and they need a place to go. So I'm going to pull these modules out and start working on feeder consolidation and other wiring issues. Just a quick look at the other modules on the south end of the layout. Obviously the PNN Junction, which I'm looking forward to. I've never done river scenery, so that ought to be interesting. And there's going to be the wooded corner here with a scratch built observatory. So i got lots of stuff to look forward to. But first things first, a little bit of work on the Brownsville modules. Okay, here's the two Brownsville modules on their sides. You can see all the different feeder wires that come off of here for power. Uh, that's just a bit excessive. It makes it very complex to take them out and set them up. So I'm going to consolidate it so there's only two wires, one for the yellow and one for the red. This one isn't too awful bad. 
But as you can see, there's five different feeders on this one that have to be hooked up every time, and that's a bit much. I've put some barrier strips on, and because the uh, uh, the wood uh, for the module is only a quarter inch wide, I went ahead and glued a piece of plywood in it so there's something substantial to uh, uh, to grab a hold of with a wood screw. So now I gotta consolidate all these wires and put them on the barrier strips, and uh, that'll be the next step. Kind of a weird perspective, but that is more like it. I've put all the wiring together using the barrier strips. So now each module just has two drops to hook up to the wiring harness. So that makes things a lot easier. I uh, Originally this was obviously a uh, portable layout, and I found that... Uh, it became the wiring harness became so elaborate that essentially I just gave up trying to take it down and set it up. So any simplification you can do on the wiring harness, I definitely recommend. Uh, just for uh, reference, the black and red wires are for turnout controls. I rarely, rarely use automated turnouts because everything's at a easy to reach. The but I've never had the heart to cut them off. The exception are these two. Which are locked. These represent the uh, switches that branch off, and I can show you. Represent the switches that branch off over here and here, which go to different staging yards. And I've got them set up on the other side in the staging yard. I can control those, and that has made operations quite a bit easier. All right, so that's kind of the end of this, and now we got one more wiring project to get done real quick, and then it's on to scenery. With the modules out of the way, I thought this would be a good time to run the accessory line. This is a 12 volt constant DC uh, up through the layout, and it'll it should eventually work on uh, run the signals on the uh, PNN junction as well as the crossing signals over there at. Thomasburg, which I haven't hooked up for a while. Nice thing about Kato, it's easy to determine or differentiate between different wiring harnesses. Obviously, this is white and brown or orange with green plugs, and that show that's so you don't accidentally hook everything all in. This also kind of demonstrates how I run my uh, uh, run my wiring harness with a daisy chain of these triples. Uh, these are left here so that the modules can hook on, and this goes. Daisy chains to the next of these. So uh, you just go on and on and on and on. I know it's fairly light wire to be using for a bus, but actually it's, it's worked very well for me. And I, we've built far larger T-Track module, T-Track layouts uh, as a club uh, that use the, just nothing more than this. And we never had any voltage drop problems. So I'm going to stick with this for the moment. So that's the uh, end of the wiring issues. It's time to start working on scenery. Originally, I was thinking I was going to have to touch up the ground foam on these two modules. But as I look it over, I'm pretty happy with where, that, where it's at. There's some things I want to change eventually, but for the moment, I'm going to leave that alone. As you can see, even though this represents an urban scene, I wanted to have a couple trees, a few trees in there. It's my intention to eventually have uh, more of an urban scene on the backdrops here. Um, but, I, you know, we'll get around to that when we get around to it. And uh, I did have some trouble. Well, I, I was just cautious about using these trees, gluing them into something that's essentially only a quarter inch thick. So I went ahead and used what I usually use for gluing buildings down, and that's a silicone-based sealant. Uh, it dries. Well, I don't think I say it actually ever dries. It stays relatively flexible. And it's done a very good job about keeping these buildings uh, in place over the years. So, yeah, I use that to uh, uh, glue the trees down. And coming over here real quick in the bottom, you can see here, I hope, that the I went ahead and gooped a whole bunch of it on here after it was through. And I think it'll hold those bigger trees in place. I'll find out, I guess. Uh, so for the moment, I've got that stuff all done. There's one more thing I want to work on on this module, the station platforms. The uh, this backdrops were a little screwy. I didn't like the way they came together. So that's the next thing. 
Here's the Brownsville Platforms module without the platforms. And with the new trees all in, I really like the way those have gone. That little parking lot there, I can do something with that here eventually. And that tree there looks really nice. Something about this module that's always kind of bugged me is where these uh, uh, skyboards meet. Let's see if I can show you a little. They don't meet particularly square. And uh, I think I've had fairly good luck in the past by just putting... Let me get around here without making anybody sick shims in various spots as they're screwed in place or in the back there's uh wing nuts and screws holding stuff in so trying to adjust that a little bit and while i've got the modules out here i said what the heck let's see if i can fix this without going to herculean efforts um so i'll see if i can shim this and make this look a little better stay tuned all right by putting a few shims and other the washers here and you can barely see them down there I've made this much more vertical, and I also added a couple of shims, if you can see them sticking out down there, and net result is, where they meet is much more square, not a big gap there, I'm quite, quite happy. So that's kind of the end of the rehab of these modules. Time to hook everybody up and start running some trains. Okay, with those two modules being done, I've updated my sheet, and as you can see, modules one and two are done all the way across. That means there's two modules done, and 16 more to go. So I got a long way to go, but eh, journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So I'm making progress. Next on the line, or next in line, is PNN Junction, and as you can see, I've got to put signals. I got to move a crossover. I got to glue down my that nice tower I built. So that that will be next. So I'm very happy with the way the Brownsville modules turned out and uh, I also now I think uh, in my mind I have a, a way forward. Um, sometimes it's easy to get lost and what's the next step. Now I know exactly what I want to do to uh, continue on with my uh, working on my layout. Uh, this is the time where I usually talk about the uh, my group, the N-Scale of Bloomington Normal and by golly uh, we I actually have good news. We were already going to be at the Galesburg Railroad Days, which is, uh, what is that, June 26th and 27th, that's uh, a little over two weeks from now. But we also were invited to a just a run session, not open to the public, by the Missouri Valley N-Scale Group. Uh, they're based out of St. Louis, and we've uh, teamed up with them before for uh, when we did St. Louis-based uh, shows, there's several big ones down that way. So uh, that'll be next week. So I've got trains, uh, going to be playing trains two weeks in a row. Um, and I hope to get some footage from that and share with you guys. It should be good. I'm, I'm really in the mood to run some trains. Um, so yeah, that's uh, kind of all I've got for today. Uh, as always, if you like what you saw, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.